welcome to the second tutorial that goes with the Craftology project kit. If you purchase the large one, there was also the option to purchase it so that you have your 6x6 six six pad. And the 6x6 six six papers are perfect for the smaller size, which is really a cute size. So it's going to be very similar to the large one. And you'll see as we're making it, we'll still have our flaps and our turns. But one thing that will be a little different is right here, you'll just see, because I had to fit it down to the size of our little folio. So to get started in your kit, you will have, you, if you purchase the project kit, then you have your pre-cut chipboard, you'll have the bow, and you'll have some fla the flowers. You'll have more than enough of your flowers that you need, and of course you're, you're going to have the 6x6 six six paper pad. And the collection pack comes with, of course, the sticker sheet. So you'll have the sticker sheet, you'll have the smaller bow. No, wait, this one, no, I think we're still doing the, I think you're going to have this, the large one also. You'll have some lace. The lace is just a hair different. So most of it's going to be very similar, and um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun to make. To get started with, I am going to be using my 6x6 chipboard. And also, in your 6x6 kit, is your 6x6 score tape sheet. So these were in the 6x6 kit. So you have a package of them, and you're going to want to take out, first we're going to start with two of them. And it's so fun and easy to use these. We're just going to slap one right on the back. Don't worry if it hangs over a little bit. If, it, if you feel it's going to be in your way, you can actually just fold it up. But just like our 8.5 by 11 sheets, all you have to do is trim that edge off. Like so. So with our project kit, the Craftology box, used to come out monthly. It is now coming out bi-monthly because monthly sometimes is not really reasonable. I know from past club kits before I was doing them myself, I have a lot that are stored and that's okay. I love them and I'll cherish them, but I have never worked them. I just don't have time every single month. So we have two six by six pieces. Then you have a six by three. And you have two six by one. These are our spine, of course. And I'm going to take another sheet of my six by six from the package. Once you get used to using these, you'll love them. Save your roll of score tape for those smaller projects. And everything looks so nice. There's no rippling, bubbling of your paper. And I know at first you're like, oh, it's an awful lot of score tape, but it's not. It just makes your work so much more meaningful because you're able to do more, less stressful. And to me, that's what crafting is about. Just let your fingers help you out here. You can either keep these by putting them back on one of the, the sheets that the score tape came on. But these smaller ones, I don't. I'm just going to discard those. And we are going to first turn this, these notifications off. And I'm going to grab my quilting ruler. And you will need two pieces of, of your cardstock, whatever you're choosing. I'm using the craft. really like it with this collection. And they are 8 inches wide by 12 inches long. And we're going to conjoin them. You'll have... A big piece left over, but I'd rather have the seam land where I want it to then. That's a lot of glue. Oops. Let me flip it over really quick, quick and clean that up. I knew that was going to be too much. There we go. Okay. 
with our pieces. So right now, I'm just going to kind of lay them down. I know we need one here. This is the cover piece. And the main thing is we want one of the bigger pieces to fall where our seam is. And there we go. Once we have the big one placed and centered there, then we can move. So you don't really have a lot left, which is nice. Still going to be using my quarter inch for tape to space in between my chipboard. That guarantees that I have a nice um, area that isn't going to crack when I fold it. And my quilt ruler. I love the quilt ruler. You can pick these up at Joann's or Hobby Lobby's with your coupons. That's why I don't sell them in our store because you can use your coupons on these. And I had um, a couple of comments saying they wish they came smaller, but I'll tell you what, I don't because, see, I use my forearms. So it really holds that in place while freeing up my hands to do the work. Move the back to that. And then, see, you can just fold that right on over itself. Just your regular score tape in a bigger size. Sure, we're lined up with an inch at the bottom. Or you can score that sheet. Plenty of room, so don't worry about marking it. We're just going to center it there. And then to avoid, you know, marking up the front of our paper, I like to burnish from the back, pushing down pretty hard. And score tape on both sides of our chipboard. So let's work to the right. Then we'll trim it and move to the left. Again, holding my inch at the bottom. Now we want to place our one inch right up next to our score tape. These pickers, um, you get a package of them. I pick them up at Harbor Freight. They're really great. And you get this big package for $3.99. I went through a lot of the Cameo and my Cricut tools, breaking them, and they don't break. So, that's what I'm using. Love it. Oops, kind of stuck there, and that's okay. So, we need to add our score tape. As a spacer, everywhere my chipboard is, I will add a quarter inch. You don't have to use score tape. You can use any other tape, or you can just measure it. But you'll find that this is a great trick for keeping your cardstock from cracking. Now, for the bottom, I am going to go ahead and move that up so it doesn't get caught on the ruler. And we're going to trim it down to one inch. Keep it. You're going to be using that for, for construction. Because you can use it for tags. Lots of stuff. So our next piece is another one inch. Now we'll put the ruler down at the bottom. Now you should have an inch at the top or bottom. So it won't matter which one you're working on. Or how you've turned your paper. Now I'm just going to go ahead and we are going to remove the backing. And that is the last piece I'll need of that for now.
Okay. Let's go ahead. Using the, the chipboard, I'm going to kind of break up like a manual scoring, or you know, instead of scoring it, it's kind of push against that chipboard. And using my bone folder, I like to score along my edge of chipboard. It depends on the cardstock you're using. If you're using the artisan cardstock, I'm going to say you're safe doing this. Get the feel of your paper, and I'll tell you what. See, it just folds it right over there nicely. You don't have to fight with it. And the whole for me, I used to love making the album inside. The cover was like my worst nightmare because it was too much work. So I had to figure out a way that made it enjoyable and a lot less work for me. And this is my way that takes the stress out of it. So do it the way that is stress free for you. But always try. I always, you know, try different ideas to see if maybe, wow, that is something that's going to make it more enjoyable for you. Covers can be stressful because when you have your pages made, and this is like the, the creme de la creme, this is your cover. Messing it up can be very upsetting when you've gone through all of this work. I know you all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so now, because I have burnished it, I have these squares. And you don't have to burnish it to have those squares. All you have to do is cut from this chipboard corner up and to the side. This is another thing I do for the stress of not having chipboard showing through my cardstock. another stress-free technique and that needs to come over a little more you'll know because you need to just line it up with the edge of your chipboard then I like to gently fold that over you're going to see if it's sticking out too far just use your scissors chipboard is your guide pivot in and remove it Do it to all sides. I turn it because that's the easiest way for me to cut. But as long as you don't go past that chipboard, well, you really can't. Because that is your stopper. You're not going to cut off too much. And of course, the smaller scissors, I think, are really the trick. I have all the others made, but the smaller scissors make it more uh, maneuverable when you are getting into those tight areas. Just remove the backing. And on the top, I'm just going to take a wider score tape. I believe this is 3 8 You can use quarter, 3 8 um, I just went 1 8 might be too small. It's too small for me, but please don't feel you have to use what I'm using. A lot of times it's what I grab. Because it all is going to work. And I just rip. Because I like to keep working. I don't want to have to stop and get out extra tools for cutting, for marking. I just here. Okay, we're going to remove all the backing, trim up anything that might be hanging over the edge. And I will be using my art glitter glue 
along the top of my chipboard. Now with my art glue, I just put it a bead right along the top of my chipboard. And then you're going to see how it kind of smushes against there. And I'll tell you what, this is the best trick to use if you're wrapping your album covers with graphic 45 paper because the glue will soften that and it will it'll just bend beautifully so try it and you'll love it that's but I do stay away from wrapping my album covers in the designer papers because they are printed on and it does weaken it and they will over time mine have always cracked Now, before I bend these down, I'm just going to check my edges to make sure nothing is sticking over on the sides, and as long as it looks good. Finish that down. Okay. See this on a small cover like this? We can have a cover basically put together and ready to be aligned in 15-20 minutes. Let's just run over, make sure it's down. And using our bone folder, you have two sides of your board. You have this one and this one. So let's make sure that we are getting both sides. And also, at this point, if it's a little, my chipboard's a little off, I'm just going to move it to where I need it and give it a quick burnish and straighten it right up. Don't be afraid of those hinges or folding areas. And the score tape is going to grab that paper and hold it down. I'm going to check again to make sure my cover is straight. And it wasn't. Move that on a little. But see now it is. Now that's off just a hair. And now that's better. The inside. You're going to need two more pieces of your cardstock, but you can use one sheet for this. I need to cut mine also. We're going to cut this down two pieces, five and seven eighths by twelve. I'm going to start at this end. One thing I'm checking for is to where 
see this is going to land and it's going to be too close to my hinges so I want it to land more on this big spot and I will tell you what I'm cutting this down to so I'm going to cut mine down to nine and a quarter inches mark over here and I want this to overlap I'll be joining it together sort of move that down so my next one is going to be cut at seven and one half So nine and three quarters and seven and one half. And how did I manage that? Wow. We messed that up. So Good thing it's just a half a sheet of paper. Eight and three quarters, so that's okay. We'll use that in our construction. Five and seven eighths by eight and three quarters. Mark that one, didn't I? Yes, I did. Okay, it's eight and three quarters. And nine and three quarters. Totally up to you. You have the rest of your your sheets. Okay, where's my cutter? Uh, six by six. Well, that's the weirdest thing. Who's sitting here? <laughs> okay, well, let's go ahead. I'm going to use my big cutter. I'm going to go along the top here and cut these down to a five and seven eighths to match my paper. going to go ahead and cut three. How do you lose a cutter? Well, you come to my house. <laughs> Don't know what else to say here. Now it should fit perfectly or you can cut it just a hair shorter. You can also use your wet adhesive. It's totally up to you. I just love my score tape sheets. Now when putting this one, I'm going to match it right to the edge. When I turn it, oh yeah, make sure you don't let this piece get on the surface it will be next to impossible to get up. And we'll just cut it right up to the cardstock there. And I'll put this piece down. And because I don't want to use the last sheet after this on there, I'm going to just fill in. Oh, I don't need to fill in. That was perfect. Where, as I say, you can fill in with just a piece of your score tape. But this is perfect. Okay. 
Now, anywhere that it does hang over, you just bend it over your cardstock. I'm going to start with my longer piece. We're going to start here on this edge where this is our closure flap. Now, if you're not comfortable taking the whole thing off, just take that first piece off, put it down, and then you can reach up and pull it. I'm okay with taking it off, and I think it's easier to take the whole thing off, but it just depends on what you're comfortable doing. I keep my fingers back there. Do not release them, and you're fine. You see, I can move it around, do anything, because my fingers keep it from touching until I'm ready for it to. Get rid of that pencil mark. Then you have what's a really nice looking professional cover. No seam, well there's seams, I mean no bubbles, no no worrying about, oh my gosh, did I put score tape here, do I need to put it there when you use the sheets, you're covered. Every angle of that paper is covered. And one thing I want to do is go back over, making sure nothing is sticking over the edge. If it is, just run your finger there and push it under. And we will be overlapping about an eighth of an inch. Time to turn the heater off. And we're going to do the same thing we did before. Let's start down here. So you'll kind of see where you're there we go. Folds are, again, one side of my chipboard, the other side, and then your cardstock just grabs a hold of that score tape. And look at that. Looks so nice. Now, don't force it down. It's going to be a little tighter, and that's what we want. See, when it comes to why I don't use my other, the paper, the decorative paper, you got to remember that paper's been through a process when it's printed on. It's actually a dye. It's wet. And then so you don't know if it's been heat cured or if they've just let it, you know, quick dry. Quick drying it, the ink will, from what I'm being told from printers, will cause papers to be a little more brittle. You don't really feel it, but it is that way, and then it cracks when you bend it. So it all depends on the process of printing. This paper has not been printed on. It hasn't gone through getting wet, drying, through a heat, and that's why I don't wrap my albums with the decorative paper, and I cut it just to fit. I don't want to put any more stress on it. I don't want to have all this work done just so it's going to crack. And that, I hope, answers some of those questions. And then just go ahead and, if you are using Artisan or the Craft Art, now our Artisan Craft, as you can see, is not linen. Isn't that cute, though? It really is a cute little folio. Um, but you still need to kind of move it back and forth there and break up those fibers. Then... With the two sets of magnets that are in your kit, we will use them for our cover. And you want to come in a good finger width because you want that to close. I mean, you want it to um, 
Of course you want it to close. But you want it to uh, hide the paper. The 6x6 six six paper pad is not textured like the 12x12 12 12 collection pack. So if you've purchased both, you'll notice your 6x6 six six pad is not textured. Okay. I set my album up. I get it square. Once it's there, there we have the cover. Okay, we're going to start with the inside. And we're going to be working on the flaps. Sorry about that kind of long stretch there um, where we started our pages. I can't get rid of it. So we're going to get started on our left hand side. You'll want to cut four, one, two, three, four, five pieces of cardstock. We want two of them. Hold on. There we go. Two of them that are five by five and seven eighths. So everything's going to be cut five and seven eighths so that it matches our inside matting. You don't want it to be sticking up over the top. So two, five and seven eighths by five. The pocket that will go on the front, six and seven eighths, but I did. Once again on your pockets, just remember, back it up on your cutter of hair. Don't cut it, you know, just cut it before your six and seven eighths by three and a half. Then we have the inside, the larger flap, that is six and three eighths by five and seven eighths. Then we have the flap on top of there at five and a half by six and seven eighths. So we need three of those. No, this one's a little bit bigger. No, nope. yes it is. It is one five and a half by five and seven eighths, two five by five and seven eighths. Okay. And I did score just to make sure I was scoring on the right side. Didn't mess anybody up in the video. We're going to score at half inch. Oh, sorry. We're scoring these on the five five inch sides. On the five inch side at one half inch. Then on the five and a half inch side of our five and a half by five and seven eighths, we're scoring at half inch. Five and seven eighths by six. And on our six inch side, for it one half inch. I was just checking my length. I wanted to make sure I cut it short enough. Pocket. So on the, the long side, we're just going to score at three sides at half inch. So three sides at half of an inch. Time for some new bone folders, that's for sure. We'll just start with the pocket since we have it. I'm just going to score up the two sides that are on the short side. One of your five, this is my five inch by five and seven eighths, and it's going to sit on top of one of them. So I'm making sure it is going to fit side to side, and that's why you want to cut it a hair short. Now, if you find it's too long, put this in your cutter, and you're going to take a little bit off. You're going to put it back in your scoreboard and rescore, and it will move your score line in. And that's not going to matter that you'll have two score lines, but that's how to fix that so you don't have to worry about cutting a whole new one. Trim it, 
and we score it. We're going to go ahead and cut up our edges here. Now we'll go ahead and miter these corners. piece of tape, clean up my mess, and we are good to go. Okay, let's burnish everything well. So, we're going to just move a couple of our flaps over. So this is, was my bigger one. This is the one that had started out at six, and this one started out at five and a half. This one is going to sit right on top of that one. These are two five, these were the five inch pieces. Now you want to make sure you have a hinge to your right, hinge to your left, and the, the hat lin, hinge on your left is going to sit on top of the edge that does not have a flap. Okay. Now, now's the time also put it on. And if it's coming over the page, you'll want to trim it. And let's go ahead and let's add our pocket. Then we'll add that on top. I really am looking forward to making this. I'm excited to work with just a six by six paper pad. I haven't done that in a while. The graphics are a little bit smaller and it's just kind of nice to have a smaller version. And it cuts down on the cost, of course. So if you want to make a bunch of them for gifts and have them around, that's the thing to do with your six by six pads. I already measured, so I knew that was going to fit. So my pocket opens towards the hinge. Actually, I'll make sure I don't get those corners. Okay, hinge on the right, hinge on the left. We have a few places where magnets will go down and we'll put those down before we do our do our matting. This is going to sit towards the hinge. Now you want to bring it about an eighth of an inch. Otherwise it's going to hit inside of your hinge and you don't want you don't want that. So just about eighth, just a tiny bit from there. Let's move it inwards so that you have room for it to flip back. Okay, 
could have gone in just a little bit more, but it's still okay. Now we want both hinges to our left hand side. This is going to sit right on top, the smaller piece. Not smaller, shorter, it's shorter in length. This side we don't have any magnets on because the weight of this top one really holds it down. And your matting, it's hard to see on the camera, but I'm going to put this right on that edge of my matting, not the edge of my album. Keeping it inside keeps it nice and neat. Okay, let's grab our six by six paper pad and we are going to go ahead and map this before we, we move on. And I just, I have to go grab mine. I thought I had set it out. I'm going to, I'm going to start with the, the first page. So I've kind of, I've laid it out. We just have to, I have to ink everything with you and we will ink it and then put it down. Okay. Um, the white is four and seven eighths, and it's three and a half that's going to sit on top. And then I'll show you the pieces that I took out as we go. One thing, you're going to have a pile of scraps that start to look like this, and you, you want to keep a hold of everything because we'll be using these as our little fill-in pieces. And... From your 6 by 6 I took out this one. These don't have names. We're using the red side. Not using those guys yet. Check out this one and this one. Okay, I'll have to show you as we're going because I already took um, this. Oh, goodness. Let's just turn everything off at once. There we go. One side is kind of your red spots, and you have your black and white. Now, let me give you the sizes on these. So, that's three and a half. What I do, that's one thing I want to tell you. When you cut your six by sixes, don't cut the length at the bottom so you have that hole at the top cut it from here so that you have these pieces left because you need to make sure you have like for your spines this is actually five and seven eighths our page is five and three fourths we cut them five and seven eighths so you don't want to cut it straight across your length and then you want to cut from the edge so I would cut here I would cut my one and a quarter and then I would put that in my cutter and cut my five and seven eighths or five and three fourths. And let me just get everything completely turned off. Okay, all notifications were turned off. So I cut this border, it comes out to be about an inch. And these are four by four and seven eighths, four and seven eighths by three and a half, and four and seven eighths. And you will have this left over. And it's just about one and a quarter. It's going to be left over from this side flap. 
So let's go ahead and ink these and we'll put them on. Now I did not ink my white cardstocks. So three and a half by four and seven eighths. And I'm just leaving that eighth of an inch border around. And I'm using the Prima Sepia ink. You can use the photo, what was that one called? Tim Holtz's photo, vintage photo. There we go. You can use a brown, a walnut, a black, just about any color will go with this. Again, this is one and a quarter, four and seven eighths. This one came out to be about an inch by four and seven eighths. I'm not going to, there we go, put this down quite yet. I'm going to check the bottom first. Make sure I don't have to trim anything. I want some of the cardstock, and I am. I'm going to have to trim this little guy. And actually, I hadn't trimmed him because I just picked it up and it looked great. So we're going to go with one and an eighth. For I ink at this time. There we go. So one and one eighth by four and seven eighths is what mine comes out. Now it's going to kind of depend on how you cut this border strip off of here. Because if you decide you want a little bit more shelving than I did, or if you're going to cut right at the shelving, that's why it's a little bit different. And I put my usually top and bottom pieces down first. And before I add glue, I'll just double check that it's going to fit the way I want it to. And I did go ahead and I'll show you. I opened my ephemera pack. I've already dumped it into my little plastic container. And right now is a good time because it's January. And at Michael's, all of their storage is on sale. When you can go get it for 50% off. And then if you have military ID, you get another 10% off on top. So it's a deal. I've already dumped it into the case. Now, when it comes to um, this one, we're going to be using a lot more ephemera than if you have bought the larger because we're working with smaller. And the 6x6 six six doesn't have the cut-apart cards, but it has these. And so these are great to work with in here. So I already took out this little flag. From the ephemera pack, you have a choice. There's four different ones in there. You can choose whichever. And I'm going to just add my adhesive to the top. You can slide a little recipe. You know, recipe cards can be three by five. They don't have to be big. And maybe it's just a favorite little, maybe you want to print off measurements and put here. Something cute for the gift. And then our sticker sheets. We still have. I used Gather in the Kitchen. And I I used it on the bigger one and now I'm I think we're gonna put it I'm gonna put it down here. We don't want to take up a lot of space at the top. So if you watch the larger album, it is on the white. We're gonna put it down here on the plaid. <laughs> you might hear some dogs snoring. I can hear them. <laughs> I'm putting it down there on the plaid. And when we open that flap, we have the rest of this black and white. And then our apple pie piece. Now let me tell you a little bit when I cut this. This one I, I'm so upset I cut it crooked. You're going to cut the length first because we're using basically the whole thing. Then I cut off 
the left side because I didn't want border on one side and no border on the other. And then I cut my, then I turned it and cut my width so that it's borderless basically. And this one came out to be five and three eighths by five and three fourths. And it's that one that I just love. That's why I just, I didn't want to cut a lot off of that. Because sometimes you just want a pretty piece of paper to look at, and that's okay. We don't always have to put a picture there, but it would be cute to put a kitchen photo on, on there. And the whole idea, I love this paper. It kind of picks up for those pictures that weren't quite Thanksgiving. They weren't quite Christmas. But um, maybe we just got together, which we did, a couple of times just for dinner. And so those pictures I'll put in here. I had some pictures with our friends in New York that didn't quite fit in my... December weekly, so, but they were really cute sitting at the table that I'll put in here. Put my corner. There we So that would be cute for the picture here, maybe a little journaling of what we did, or eight, or a picture, I mean a recipe here, and then just leave this plate, this side plain. Okay, when we open it, let's go ahead and open that flap. We have this one, and on this one is where I cut, and I'm going to do it again. Let me open my, I've got my big one over here to reference to. Um, oh, the flaps, they're going this way. So I'm going to be cutting, I'm going to cut with a blade a couple of slots here before I put it down. And it's the same size, it me measures 5 and 3 eighths by 5 and 3 fourths. And then this will have this back piece, which is actually the album. So it's five and seven eighths by five and seven eighths, and I'm using the red. This flap here is this piece, and then it's the other side. So we add some more of those polka dots on the end to break up the black. This one is three and seven eighths by five and three fourths cut it a little short and I don't know why I did that and then this one was just three eighths of an inch you could even go half inch depending on your how much spacing you'd like there on the end so before I ink these I'm going to grab my box cutter my small one my ruler and then I'm just going to pick a spot. I'm going to go three rows up, and you'll see the scallops. I'm going to start. You need to leave room on this edge. So I'm going to come in two scallops, and I'm going to leave two scallops on each side. And if you're more comfortable um, doing it in your cutter, you certainly could. I can't do that. I'm going to put my ruler down just a hair. I'm going to poke a hole and poke a hole. Kind of note where your ruler, mine ends at three and a half. So two, two of the scallops in on each edge. Don't try to cut it always on the first because you don't want to rip your paper. Then you'll be able to slide a few things down in there. Then I'm going to offset this one. 
Well, you really can't. We can't. I'll make it a little bit smaller. More bookmark size. Starting two, two scallops in. This time I'm going to leave three scallops in. I went a little off, but it's okay. Now, gluing this down, the one thing to remember is we need to leave all of this open, and we need to leave all of this open so that our tags will fit all the way in, and it can be a nice long one. So we want to add adhesive here at the top, here at this top, and along the sides, and that's all. Oops. So up here at the top. There we go. So I don't get on the sides, of course, and down each side. We'll fill that in at the top. I'm going to get my spatula here. I'm going to make sure I don't get any of the top adhesive in there. They're not for a lot of stuff, those tuck spots. They're more of just like cute little keepsakes interest things. They're not super deep because we're working six by six. You can see that will go all the way through. And I forgot to hit that page, or did I? No, I didn't. You need to pay attention here. This one's five and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. It's okay. No one will notice. Such a happy paper too. Make sure that fits in between and lays flat or you might need to trim it. He said, I cut mine a little short, but I don't want to waste it, so I'm just going with it. It's okay. And then my other piece, three-eighths or half-inch, whatever you want to leave for borders. Now, on this one is where I have a magnet. And I didn't put it on this back side because it, it was heavy enough that it just kind of laid down. But I did want this flap 
to have the magnet. And I am just using the large. And a little change on here. I used some of the apple pie, that big scene. And for the smaller one, I'm not going to because I didn't have the huge piece um, left like on the 12 by 12 so I'm just using the white in here which I really ended up liking because it looked cleaner and we're not going to ink that so I cut mine at two inches by five and seven eighths everything is or five and three fourths sorry everything is the five and three fourths if I accidentally say five and seven eighths don't listen to me it's five and three fourths we'll just get that out in the open right now <laughs> And you're really not going to see this because we're going to have our little cards in there. Now I'm going to go ahead and ink these and I'm going to give you the sizes first. How's that? So I have the top and they're two and seven eighths by three inches. And again, that's another one of our borders. So I just cut a strip and it's two and seven eighths by one and an eight, one and one eighth. So the bottom piece came out to be one and a half. And it's the back side of our border. And then you, if you have one of the printers, I know a lot of crafters got them for Christmas and I actually got another one they're the um, sprockets. I like the sprocket. There's so many different out there, so all of them are great. But this is the sprocket that also takes pictures, but also Bluetooth to your phone, and they're two by three pictures. And albums like this are just perfect. They come out to be this size, and see here we are in the kitchen, and you just trim them down. See, there's a lot of excess, so I could trim it either this way or if it was taken the other direction, it will fit that way. Maybe if I get my hands out, huh? But see, there's a lot of background. You just trim those off. Those are great for, for albums that are six by six. I get a lot of requests for six by six albums, but then when, when they're made, in reality, you know, you do have to have a smaller printer like that be, unless you really cut your pictures down, and I do. I cut all that background off of my pictures. Because even when you crop it, and then you print it, you end up with that same big picture because it doesn't change the print size, uh, the picture size per se. It changes um, what you're seeing and brings it even bigger in up front. So I just trim it all off to fit. So we have, it's really, I think it's really cute. We have the little mini version of our huge version. Okay, and there's that cute little one. This is where I was talking about, um, I had that piece, but I went ahead and changed it to white on here. And then we'll do the same inside. Kind of cute to see the mini version. Okay, over on our left hand side is your white, and it's three and a half by five and three fourths. 
And then this is where this piece came in. And remember, you want to cut your length. You cut it from, don't cut your length, cut the, the sides off first. It's three quarters of an inch by five and three fourths. And then our kitchen wares, they are four and three eighths by five and three fourths. And this is where, why you don't want to cut your length. This is going to be five and seven eighths by one inch for our spine piece right there. And then it kind of blends all together. So let's ink everything first. This is a really great uh, beginner folio if you really want to learn the flaps because we're going to be making some this one has cool those really cool flaps but it um, really gives you some hands-on flap making let me tell you because this whole thing is just flips and flaps and that's fun that's what makes an album really fun when you have it on your coffee table and you're going through it with friends and relatives and you you pull out those pictures from the little hiding spots they really seem to enjoy that. So I'm going to start with my spine piece. And it's also a great size for those gifts that you need to get made and have on hand. the white down first Just double checking the ink that I saw some spots. And leaving an eighth of an inch border all the way around. Here we go. We'll come back and make our tags that are going to go on the inside of there and also here and you'll see how heavy it is so it, it does hold it I mean that would that's going to flip open but nothing super serious and let's start on the center now of our book to show you real quick we're making the mini version of this I'm just going to open one so we'll be making this and that's the biggest bulk of real estate for your photos in this little album. And we'll be doing this full size. And let's go ahead and we're going to start on the mini version of this with the lay flat pocket. Oh, this lay flat pocket has the side, which is really cute for adding in more of your... Um, tags and things and again nope no magnet I'll give you the measurements here so we're going to start with our first piece five and seven eighths by six and a half and it's going to be the full piece that comes here but I am going to trim this down let's take an eighth of an inch off so I'll give you that new measurement so you don't even have to measure. Um, I don't want it to be hitting into any of the hinges. So let's take it down to six and three eighths by five and seven eighths. 
and our little mechanism here. Our base is five inches by five and seven eighths. Side fold piece is five and seven eighths by four and a half. This is our top and it is five inches by six and three eighths. We'll cut this down to four and a half. I cut it just a hair too long. I mean, hold on. I cut it the same width and I didn't allow for the fact that we're going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, scoring it. So we just need it to be four and a half. Again, don't throw that away. You might be using it. You never know. This piece that is the six and three eighths by four and a half, we're scoring on the six and three eighths of an inch side. I wish they'd make bone folders neon colors so we could find them easily. We're going to score it half inch. On the five by five and seven eighths. I'm going to score half inch. On the five inch side. On our six and three eight by five and seven eighths. On your six and three eight of an inch side. Score it one half inch. This is the four and a half by five and seven eighths. And you want to score on the four, four and a half inch side at one half. This is my six and three eighths. It's my widest one. And that's the one piece that's actually going to go down first. Let me make sure I leave that open. Yeah. We'll go ahead and put this one down first. Oh, wait. No, we won't. Just set that to the side. We don't, we want to put our two, um, those two other mechanisms on there. So let's not do that. Let's go ahead and work with these guys because they need to go down on the base also. So your wider piece that is five inches, and furnish our score mark. We'll move this. We'll build it and then we'll put it onto our book. This is the top. Okay, take your five inch piece, hinge at the right hand side, and this is our top hinge, and we're going to make sure we're going to fit right. We're going to make sure the length and everything is correct. Okay, this one is going to have a magnet. So I just checked.
Now, if it is too long, see, we can trim it because we're not building it on the book. Once it's built on the book, well, we're kind of stuck there. I'm going to take just a hair off. Open this, and this is our flap on the right hand side and it's going to sit right inside there and again see if you need to adjust your length I always have to so it's just one of those things I'd rather have it a hair shorter than too long. I don't like it when it sticks out. See, and then I can set it down a little bit on the hinge. I mean, set it down a little bit from the top, which is good. Mine's sitting about an eighth of an inch, and now it's perfect. I'm going to match it to the bottom no matter, you know, if the top... I do have eighth of an inch here, and that's fine. I do want my bottoms to match. So I'd like to see some of those layers. So that's also a clue to your your person that you gave it to if they're not familiar with flaps and that they'll see, oh, I'm supposed to open it. Okay, one piece we didn't cut is our lay flat pocket. And um, we're going to need to cut that. So I'll get that piece cut and give you the measurement. For the lay flat pocket, let me show you. On the big album, the big album ends up with a triple pocket. And the lay flat pocket is so easy to make because you always know it's always uh, going to lay flat. And you have this cute little side flat opening. But on our 6x6 album, it's not going to be a triple pocket. It only can be a double pocket. So this is 4.5 by 9. And you want to check your width before we start putting it down because it needs to match perfect. That's the thing with the lay flat pocket. It's already the perfect size. So it's four, mine's 4.5 four by 9. And putting it in the cutter on the nine inch side, you squirt two and a half and six and three fourths. Let me give you a hint here. So if you want to make this for every single album, and I did it on our Christmas cookies one, it's so easy. This is the this was twelve inches. I cut off three. Um, let me show you. We could do this as a as the third pocket. Actually. Oh, yeah, we can. You know what? Sometimes I shock myself in not knowing what I'm doing. Um, sorry, you do need that three-inch piece. We are sticking it in here. Oh, wake up, Tammy. Um, it is going to be a triple pocket. I am so sorry. I need to trim this just a hair. So take your four and a half by 12-inch piece. Cut it to nine. Okay, this is nine inches long. This is that three inch piece. And um, we are doing it. Sorry. So my three inch piece now fits inside of there. Thus the lay flat pocket. You're going to put it in your scoreboard at nine inches and score it two and a half and six and three fourths. And this is what it will look like. Now the thing with the lay flat pocket. We do need to mat it before we put it down. And we already have some pieces left over from when we did the other. So I have, I have this one. You do need the other piece that's going to be for the hinge that we didn't cut the length. And then I have front and back of this. Okay. And the matting is very simple. And it's this way just about every time. Um, 
It's going to be two. It's going to be two and an eighth, two and an eighth, and two and an eighth. I'll tell you why. See, everything, um, of course, this one can be a little bit less. Let's do this one less. We'll only do this one at one. So we'll do two and an eighth, one inch, and two and an eighth. No, we don't need to go that far either. Okay. One and a half. Now that I have you totally confused, we're going to cut the matting one and a half, one and one eighth, two and one eighth. Okay. So, I have this piece left. And it's four and a half inches. So we're going to cut our width at four and three eighths. Now, if you don't want to use these scraps from what we've already done, then just don't just put this aside and wait until you're completely finished. And um, I'm not even going to cut that down. It came out to be it's one and a half. So I just cut my width and it's fine. So I think I'll go ahead and go with these guys. Four and three eighths and two and one eighth. I need to, oh yeah, I'll cut off that circle piece. Now I'm going to use the hearts. I'll show you why. We have to also mount the page. So I'm going to cut a one and a half inch piece at four and three eighths. This is going to mat the top because we need to mat it before we put this down. And again, though, we don't need to use this whole piece. We only need a two inch piece. Talk about using our um, paper wisely and having left over what we need. It, this is great. You're going to get your money worth here because you're going to get not only this done, but you'll be able to get some probably little cards made. So this is going to sit on my main page. And that's how that will look. So let's go ahead and mat everything. Ink our edges. And the lay flat pocket, like I said, it's easy. The the 12 inch measurement, I'm already inked that. The 12 and then cutting it to 9 is the same no matter what your width. If your width is 12 inch page and you want a 12 inch lay flat pocket, you got it. You just leave it at 12, cut it at 9, and then take that 3 inch piece and that's your center. And it will, every time, it'll be a nice pocket that lays super flat. So, I'm going to go ahead and mat. This is that center piece first. And I just want to mat the top. And then score it two and a half and six and three fourths. So that's all you have to remember for every single page. And that kind of takes the guesswork out. But it also makes it so your pocket, it's not going to be for a lot of stuff, but you don't need it for a lot of stuff. You're going to get all that you need in there. Without having to score and get things stuck. Okay. 
And then let's go ahead and map the top. And our pocket. So let me tell you, if you want, um, we're going to have the side will be open. But you need to make sure that we don't get glue. I'll show you inside of there. So this is how this will work. We're going to start here. The center will sit all the way down to that score line. So just push it right down. And we're going to add adhesive. This is the bottom flap. Just on the sides. Go ahead and fold that up. Make sure everything's straight. Okay, now that became a pocket. Now on here, as you can see, we only need glue from the bottom about a quarter of an inch onto your paper. Now you can make a mark if you want with your pencil or just kind of eyeball it. Okay, let's let that dry, except let me show you, you can when you put this down, you won't be able to do it on this, but you can also make these onto the middle of a page and it becomes like a belly band. But since we're not doing that, I'm going to take my adhesive to the right hand side and I'm going to close that. And then we'll put the next piece of matting at the top of our flap. That's being cut crooked. Hold on. I'm going to have to rip that off. Now, I'm not super happy with my fiskers. I can see now it's super crooked. Oh, no, can't do that with that one because I'm going to need this. So, there we go. Um, I have another piece of the shello. I know it has to do with this arm, sometimes it's not getting this arm, so I'm going to change mine. I should just use my big cutter. I don't know why I'm not. That's much better. I should, should have checked that. Now I'll tell you, we're just going to mat this whole thing before we even put it on the book. Now this is going to go down. Remember, this is going to become a pocket. And it doesn't get in the way of these tags because it's we've overlapped everything on the inside, which is nice. And then you have that side pocket. My edge is down. So on the back, I am going to fill the whole thing in. Now, you could also use this as another uh, pocket. Oh, it is another pocket. One, two. Um, just put your glue on three sides. I didn't. So I'm just, uh, I'm batting a million here, aren't I? You know what I'm going to do? 
that piece. There we go. Only because this art glitter glue tends to have a little bit of a sticky residue. Okay, let's do this correctly. Three sides, because the top is a pocket. That was the whole reason for having our triple pocket. Only do three sides. I'm so glad you guys are getting a lot of learning experiences here. <laughs> on this little project. It's because I, I'm used, I can just make it, but when I'm talking about it, I, it tends to um, get confused. And it's like, oh, what did I just do that for? Okay, while that's drying, we're going to put our first uh, magnet here. The next magnet is actually going to go down on the base of the book. for safekeeping and we can go ahead and mount the inside of our book and do the back side whoops back side so with our six by six paper pad that has become buried are going to take out whoops, these two and I'm actually using those now we we have a little different format and hold on we're going to need I'm going to have to change one up, which is just fine. But I'm looking for there. We need both of those. Then the back side is our white, so we're good there. And the only change we have is our inside flap, but I have to make sure here that I don't use, okay, and I'm not. Okay, we're going to use, we're going to use this butterfly. Because we need our houses, our kitties. Inside top, I'm going to cut my blue at four and three eighths. Now measure yours. Yours should be about six or five and seven eighths. I'm I ended up cutting mine, remember? So measure your length and then take off an eighth or a fourth, whichever you like. So mine is going to be cut down to um, I'm going to go five and five eighths by four and three eighths. I'm going to use my big cutter. Remember, cut the four first in case we need the length. So four and three eighths. And then that's just in case we need it. Oh, 
lines 5 and 5 eighths. Then the trees. And it goes so nicely with the blue. Now remember, I trimmed mine down, so please measure your lengths. Again, four and three eighths. Mine's going to be five and three fourths. And in the original big one, we had the hearts, but we're, I'm not using the hearts on this one. And it's going to be three and seven eighths. And again, measure your length. And it's going to be the five and five eighths. And instead of the hearts, I am going to go with this butterfly. But I think the butterfly will be too much, so I'm using the back side. And for this outside piece, it's going to be um, that same size that we just did, the four and or three and seven eighths, and then your length. That's it for it. So we can go ahead and map that. And then we have these strips left because we are going to be using this butterfly. And we'll start with the, the inside, which is the trees and the bigger blue because we're using that on the outside. checking the sticker or yeah we used the sticker so we'll use a luckily there's different sizes on the sticker sheet of the florals so we can use a smaller one here on our smaller album already have our pocket on so we don't have another piece for that we just have the inside and we are cutting some of that out of the white so we'll do that after we have all this mats all these mats down Tree. 
And then when we changed for the side, and then for the front. This is the back side of this unit, flap unit. And this was a piece, and you should have it left over too, depending on how you cut your, pa cut your papers. And it's one and five eighths, and I cut it at five and three fourths. It was pretty much already there. Then I cut my white cardstock at four inches by three and three quarters. So it is three and three quarters wide. And that means I just need to measure the bottom here. And I'm going to take, this is a full size 6 by 6 And I am going to have to cut the length because we need, we need it to go the correct way. And I'd rather cut this length than to cut here, if that makes sense, because then we can use that for a card. So let's cut this at one and five eighths. Whoops, not that way. And three and three fourths. This will be the bottom. This will be the side. And I used the teapot on the other one, and I'm still going to use it because I'm going to set it down just a little more. And also, we want to go back inside. See, I used this huge blue one on the bigger file, on the bigger one, but I don't think I will because of the, the size of it. It's so big. And I think we'll wait and come back on that with our maybe ephemera for the inside, or, or we'll use one of the others. But we definitely will use the teapot. I'm just going to put the white down, and then I'll go ahead and ink the edges. Leaving that eighth of an inch. So they match, hopefully pretty close. Cute little housewarming album also that just came to mind. So the teapot is on the sticker sheet. Still add my adhesive. Now see I'll set it down a little bit further into the this matting instead of up on my picture where the other one is so big it had room for it. Okay, let's grab our book. And this is going to sit to the right. And you want to, again, put it so it's about an eighth of an inch away from your fold. Close my book. 
It really is like a little booklet. It's really cute. Okay, our, if you're using oh, that other magnet, oops. And this is going to go down, but we want to build our other pieces on here first. And one thing, yeah, see, we're going to check for is the length. Let me close my book up here. This actually sits on top of here, but it's heavy. So I'm making sure it's about the same length and it is, and that's good. So let's open this. And let's go ahead and map the back. So what I did is this is the five and seven eighths. So I'm going to cut my white matting. And I want to have an inch on each side of my um, pattern paper. So when I take an inch off, that's four. So I'm going to cut this at three and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. Like so. Let's cut this butterfly piece. We're going to need this, the other one too from your book, but we'll start here. Make sure my arm is open. I'm cutting it at one inch. Oh, we might have to get them both off for here. Oh, guess what? We really can. Let's do roll up. There we go. Well. We did it. And I know I may have to cut, make some adjustments, but I'll tell you what. I will make the adjustments to this guy. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Yes. I'm going to take... A quarter of an inch off. So, three and five eighths by five and seven eighths. Once I lay this down, now I am going to mark this with a pencil, and I'll, you, you can, I can, I know you know why. Or let's do this. Let's go ahead and put our sides down because we know we're going to put them right to the edge. Okay, we're good. Let's put our sides down first. And then our center will fit. should fit your matting just fine.
Oh, no. Guys, we shouldn't have done this. Okay. I will put a note. I can't believe I just had you do that. Um, I can't cross, I can't take this out. So, what? You've already seen the note. Do not put this side down. It's okay. I'll mat on top. Well, okay, I'll stop and put that note in. Okay, we'll go on and we'll build the top of this. I have everything cut, and I also pre-made, I want to show you one of the little flaps. And in our big album, it's these. Matting will be just a hair different on the pattern paper because um, the 6 by 6 are printed a little different. And we'll still have them open and the back side. So we already, I think I did give you the measurements, but I want to give you the measurements again for the flap. And I'm glad that hopefully you, at this point, you didn't make the mistake I did in matting the back of our book. But I'll fix that. Now this one, if you remember, was six and three eighths by five and seven eighths, and on the six and three eighths of an inch side, you scored it half the inch. Now for the little booklet, this is really cute, a little mini version. So I did put one together. I didn't want to have any mistakes because I know you don't appreciate that, but it's life, and I just it happens. So, I thought I'd make one, and we'll avoid any of those issues. And on this one is different than our bigger one. I did the white. Because if you notice with your paper pad, you're getting down to your last bit of it. Okay. For our little booklet, we need two pieces that are 3 and 1 8 by 5 and 5 eighths. And I just need to make some adjustments here. On my notes, so I make sure I give you the correct written instructions. Two of those. They're five and five eighths of an inch long and three and one eighth wide. We're going to score on the three and one eighth inch side at one half of an inch. And we're going to score both of them. Then our base piece is six and a quarter by two and three quarters and on the six and a quarter inch side we'll score at one half inch and that becomes our flat. Then we have two pieces that are two and three quarters by three. That's these little guys right here. And on the three inch side you want to score at one half. Three inch side, score at one half. Now we're going to go ahead and make this little pocket that's going to go on the back side. And it is four and a half by four. And what we want to do is score on three sides. So we want to put on the four inch side. We're going to score at half inch. Turn to the four and a half inch side. Half inch and back to the four inch side at half inch. We'll just set that aside. We won't need it for a while, but it's all done. So now we're going to build our little piece here. Now on this, this one is going to be my top one, so I just need I'm going to have this at the right hand side. It's not going to really matter yet. For me, it's just kind of a visual thing. And I want to show you when you put, put this on here. Oh, where's our little guy? Just so you can see. See, they're a little bit shorter. Um, because we have these flaps. So you want to just center them 
on here. I'm going to finish that really well. But we're not putting it down quite yet. I'm just double check them. Yes, that's correct. Into our little side flaps. Going to put our sides on first. And if you're new to crafting, you'll notice I do I do this upside down. It's just easier with it towards me, so I hope that doesn't throw you off or confuse you. I know even now with me it does. Sometimes I have to look twice if I'm looking at something, and that's what happens when you have a little bit of ADD in you. Okay, now put our, it doesn't matter whether you do a bottom or a top, but now you'll see how well it fits there and how it gives us room to fold this up. And Sandra, you don't have very much on each end. You do want them pretty much even. Oh, finally, I hope those dogs are going to sleep. They got new bones today, and Wilbur wore himself out worrying that somebody else was going to get his. I think he's finally over there snoring. Thank goodness. Um, on this one, I have the bottom and then the top. They, it can go either way. And there's your little booklet. Now, the matting. Let's do the white first. Of course, you need one, two, three, four, five pieces, and I did cut them. For my side pieces, you need two pieces that are two and three eighths by two and five eighths. So two and three eighths by two and five eighths. Then you need your pattern paper. And I use the houses. They're also two and three eighths by two and five eighths. Now, the two and five eighths is this way. Your length is going to be your two and five eighths. So it's longer than it is wide. And that's directional. So your two flaps. So we need two white pieces. And I do need to trim mine off just a little bit. So they are going to be five. They need to be 
oh, five, maybe, let me, let me see. I'm going to go five and a half. So they are five and a half inches high. Now, just a minute before you cut yours. No, that's fine. So I did mine five and a half. You might want to do it just a hair over by two and a half. We're going to do five and five eighths. Let's do the five and a half. <clears throat> Excuse me. Five and a half by two and a half for two of those. This is my center. It's a little bit wider and it is five and five eighths by two and five eighths. So it's a little bit wider. And I am putting the white back here. And I do need to cut oh that's right I need to cut this one. So again it's going to be the same for your back as this one. Two and five eighths by five and five eighths. I'm going to remeasure the back of mine here just so they match. Two and five eighths by five and five eighths. Measure twice, cut once. If you remember. Okay, for your, your flaps of your pattern paper, I used this piece, which was a leftover, and this was, I had to use the full sheet for both of them, so I used that one on here, so I'm using the back side, so I cut it to the 5 and 5 eighths, and I cut my 2 and 5 eighths. No, it's two and a half and two and a half. So you'll get both of these from one six by six. And again, this was a leftover and it was two and a half and it's the same five and five eighths. But I think I'm going to have to cut it down if I remember. Yeah. But that's okay because it's always better if it's a little bit long. That's easier to fix. Okay. Two and a half by the five and five eighths. And I trimmed it a little bit shorter than five and five eighths. I kind of, when I get to two and five eighths, then I back up a hair. And I do that a lot, as you know, because I'm not going to give you a sixteenth of an inch measurements. I think that gets confusing for some of them, um, for some of us, even for me. And I can do it if I'm just working by myself in sixteenths. But when I'm telling you guys about it, I don't want to. I just don't want to mess you up any worse than I do. I think I give you enough learning experiences. <laughs> you don't need to go into 16s. I was doing centimeters for one of the ladies. It's been a while on scrapbookers. And one of the other ladies didn't realize they were centimeters and she was cutting them. And she's like, my board doesn't go to 30. And I'm like, oh, it's centimeters. And she was um, just about ready to go to a print shop and have them cut it and I'm like no and so I don't do that anymore I figure we have to use the calculator I'll just let them because I'm not that great at centimeters 
after certain numbers anyway. I can do the, the whole numbers, R's into centimeters. I can't do the funky point threes. I have no idea. Which is sad. I kind of wish that we had been taught in school. Only because there's a lot of tutorials out there in centimeters. And if you don't know how to, or you don't want to, even conversion, come on, it's not accurate. It really isn't. Because we don't have the tools to make it completely accurate. Okay, it's all white on the inside. some burnishing. They're not going to lay flat. That's what our, <clears throat> excuse me, that is what our little thingy here is for. And you can use this on any project. It's really cool. Okay, let's mat the inside. Now these are the same, I gave you those sizes. Already inked those edges. That band-aid doesn't want to let my finger slide. Remember, we're only doing one on camera, so you'll need to do the second one. And if you need to still follow the tutorial, just um, rewind it and rewatch it uh, because it's the exact same thing. I'm going to open this to mat. Turn this over, and our last white piece that we cut. Okay, we need to make the, the closure. So we do have 
these little pieces we need to score. These are our two and a half by one. And on the two and a half inch side, I'm just going to score my ends at half inch on both of those. And mine looks a little bit longer. Oh, it's not. Grab your little band and let's put it in there. Now you should have, let me show you, you should have movement. Mine seem a little bit bigger. that in a little bit. We want it to match. Yours should be fine. I don't know why mine. Of course, I cut these after. There we go. And your band should go in there with a little bit of movement. Because we need that. We're going to mat it, but we want it tight. And then our little matting pieces are three quarters of an inch or no seven eighths of an inch by one and a quarter and I just used the back of that blue right it was left from what's going to go on the band and I did ink mine Okay, and let's see, I should have, I'm going to put this down. What I did is, it's a half of an inch from this, this edge right here. I went in a half of an inch and three quarters of an inch from the bottom. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you can do the measurement thing. So well, this is kind of a dual ruler, which is cool. So I set it, whoops, I can set it here at my line that's three quarter of an inch. That's what I love about this quilting ruler. And then there's my half inch. Just make a circle. Half inch, but I'm going to move it up to three lines. So if you don't have a quilting ruler, I'm telling you, it's a great investment. Make a dot there. And that's where, and I'm going to put my pages here, my corner on the left-hand side needs to sit, and I can kind of see if they're straight. I get my quilting ruler at, well, actually I get them wholesome, but I can't ship them. That's the only thing. They're too long for a box. So shipping when it's be worth it for you guys but you can go into to um, Joann's and I want to show you 
so you can see these lines. There's a pink line there, then there's a, a solid, more solid white than that line. You, you can see the pink. So three of those is my three quarters of an inch, makes it so easy. And then that's a full inch to the two. Um, and I'll tell you what, this doesn't wear off like your regular craft rulers. So you'll have it many years beyond a crafting ruler. Don't know why they don't do the screen printing better for us because on crafting we're working with more liquid glue and things and sewing which causes paint to come off. They don't, I don't know. Just a way to buy. And so there's my three lines and I can put it right at three quarters. And match that up there and I'm good. And it's so easy to read, especially if you need glasses. So I'm going to quickly. my closure in here before my glue hopefully dries there just to make sure we're even yep oh Whoops. now the strips I cut are one inch by five and an eighth. They're both one inch by five and an eighth. And have pink on one side and I'll have the blue on the other side. Let's see if I need to ink up a little bit more. I figure the solid because there's so much pattern. And of course this is where some of the printing is different your mushrooms on your 12 by 12 paper pack aren't just pink on the back. They're a little bit different. What is it's me, it's not the paper. There we go. Sticker sheet is next. It's gonna go this way. And on my sticker sheet, this is the faux looking washi tape. Way cute. Oh will it fit? See I use this on the big one. It's gonna have to be trimmed just a little, so I'm just gonna follow along there. Take a little bit off to fit. And there's that. Now let's take our page. We have the bottom that's going to sit to the bottom of our page. Right hand is this side. And it's going to sit to the right side, which is the outer edge. So you can also see with the weight, this will hold your page closed just fine. I'm going to just miter this bottom. 
because the top I don't have to worry about being hidden under the paper. The hinge is on the left hand side here. Then you should have just about 16 to an eighth of an inch on that side. The top of this one. Oh, I have a my die cuts also to add. Now this is from the die cuts and I left, I just barely glued the bottom. Okay, let's grab, oh and it says always enchanting. Again, I'm just going to add adhesive here to this bottom. And now we can open our page that way. And you'll want to get out of your 6x6 six six pad the mushrooms. And you're going to cut this down to 5 and 3 quarters by 5 and 3 quarters square. And it's going to sit beautifully right there and hide those hinges. This paper just is so 70s. <laughs> Remember the kitchens with the mushrooms? I know I do. My mother had mushrooms. It was just the end thing. Mushrooms and carpeting in our kitchen. In a brand new house. Never did understand the kitchen carpeting over the years. Especially when the dishwasher overflowed. I just want to pick up my books here. I'll put it together. I've got to find Hmm. It's here. I was gonna put that back on. Okay, we're going to do this back side, but of course, the back side is going to be different. <laughs> it's different because of the size. We'll still make these cute little couple of them, but it's different. And then I've already cut these two pieces for my 6x6, six six, so I'll get those and show them to you also. And let's grab our book. And, oh, let's, no, wait, we got the back side to do. What am I thinking here? I'm not. I'm going to turn this over. And our kitties. And it's the same thing. You know, no house, well, some of you, if you're not a cat person, but no house is complete without a kitty <laughs> or a puppy. So five and three quarters by five and three quarters. I've already inked my edges. Or maybe a chicken or a pig. So you can really see how cute of a homewarming little album this is. Definitely put pictures of the kitty the first day or you know, it's always been a challenge when we had cats trying to get them acclimated to the home and keep them locked in the house. Nobody let them out so they don't get run away and try to go back to their old house. 
and that's where we're going to do just one little pocket and this you know what we may cut this down but let's see I wanted to, to make it first You can decide do you want it to come up this way or do you want it to be sideways like in the other book sideways I would I'm going to take a half inch off sideways you can put some side tickets of the little tabs or we can put it right here and I think I'm going to go here now we're going to use the same green that I used on the larger album let me show you the only thing is and I use both of these I still want to use that sweet afternoon, but our frame. Oops. So your frame will somewhat fit if you want to put it underneath this. Um, and we can also say trim it down. I'm okay with that. I like it actually. To be honest with you, it's not, I mean, you can just still slide a little picture in there. I don't really ever use the frames too much. I use them more as a, just a vocal. And then I did use the big kitty, but see, he's too big. So you can kind of decide which you would like to use here and there. And we'll do a different sticker down here in the bottom, just a small one. Um, no matter what, the frame has to go down first, and you have to decide. And if you want it to go this way, then your, uh, your frame can actually go over the top if you like that look. So just some options here. The frame's really cute. Or you can also you can also leave the pocket off just so you know. Oh, that's pretty cute too for this one. So, um, kind of two options there for you. If you want to do the pocket, you're going to now cut a piece of the green at two and three quarters by three and seven eighths, and you do have a you do have that. It's the back of your. second piece of apple pie so you're going to mount that and then you're going to actually put the frame down first on top I'm going to leave it off I, I like this and I'm thinking with this size of page I, I like the look of it so that's what I'm going to go with and then I'm I will leave off oh no I won't I was going to put it on here but we'll, leave, we'll put it right there. So you have kind of a, an option there on your looks. So on the frame, right now, I'm just going to add my adhesive to the bottom. And you want to do that because if you are going to slide a photo inside of there, I had my Let's just go with this. You'll slide your picture down in, and then you can go ahead and glue it down if you want to leave your picture in there permanently. Again, you would put your glue on three sides in your pocket. Now would go down. And because it would be glued down, oh, you still have, you know, you're still going to be able to pretty much get a picture in there, especially if you're going to go sideways. It will stop just short. So 
Oops. And let me, let's put this down and then I'll cut. So if you want to put some of your, I'll show you like, I call them bookmarks. All I did to fit inside my pocket, and I'd cut these down to one and a half inch, or you can cut them any size that you like, and then with the corner chomper, or literally, literally, with your scissors, you're just going to chomp your corners off, okay? And then you'll mat it, eighth of an inch border, and then you'll slide those down in. So we could even use this here. So I definitely won't throw that away. We can now put our page in the book, and I can fix my, my mistake. Where, this is where you could do these two, but we weren't supposed to do that side. And then that will fold down over the top. This is a chunky folio. It's not a lay flat folio. And I think you, you know, will recognize that as you're putting it together here. So now I need to remat my butterflies. I believe we cut those at five and seven eighths by one inch. I won't be able to get a full one inch because of my mistake. That's okay. Literally, that's my last two pieces of paper. We've done really well using up our six by six. Okay. Three fourths. I don't think you will have made this mistake if you read that note, but in case you did, <laughs> we're having to do this. I'm wrong. I can get an inch. Those were an inch by five and seven eighths. And that covers that hinge. Stay on there so it helps. So you can't really tell. And then from the sticker sheet, I'm taking the Our Sweet Little Life. Putting mine a little more at the bottom. And then on here, on the big one, I used happy, but as you can see, it's definitely going to be too big. So let's take memories, or if you don't, aren't crazy about that color on the yellow. I like it. It's just so 70s with the avocado and the green. Remember those green kitchens? My mother had an avocado one with the mushrooms. And then if you want to put something down here, I am going to use the tradition. And the only thing different is if you 
if we want to use this, we do have to back it. It is pretty big for this little guy. So let's choose one that's a little bit smaller. And I don't think we will use him. The rosemary pretty much is great by itself, but I want to back this. I'll use my pocket. I want to back it because it's going to stick up over the edge. And you don't want the sticky back unless you want it nice, nice and firm where you're putting tags in and out. Sorry, it's cold, it's hot. I gotta plug the heater back in. Flatten that out. Fussy cut around. So I'm going to leave a little bit of a border of the craft cardstock. And I'll adhere it just up to the neck of the bottle. So I want it to stick over. No, well, I kind of do. Let's see if we can get that tradition to fit. Really quick underneath a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to put it right in the center. There we go. So I am going to use that tradition sticker. And a couple of things, of course, I'm going to map them. And what I'll do is I'll just measure all my cards. So these are going to be two and three quarters by three and seven eighths for my matting. So just measure them and add that eighth of an inch on. And you've got Hello Harvest, pretty cute. So we'll stick those in there. And then we have our one inch by five and seven eighths of our heart, so you should have that left. And then two and seven eighths by five and seven eighths is the other side. And I think I need to trim mine a hair. Let's do. And I can ink them and we can put the inside down. And then we'll go back through and put the rest of our ephemera. And then we'll do the outside. Not put that on upside down. This takes just a little extra attention if you're using your wet adhesive with the magnets underneath there. want the edges down.
Okay. I mentioned up here I had used, so let me show you on the big one, that you could, it's going to take up most of your page. Kind of big for this little guy here. So, double check our ephemera. There we go. Bring in the green. So this is from the ephemera pack, and right there, great place to write the date. And I'm only going to adhere this top so you can slide underneath it. Okay, we'll let that dry. Green looks great. And that is it on that page because I left all that for photos. We've already done our sweet little life and our teapot. Before we go to the cover, let's just go, let me double check through here, make sure I didn't miss any stickers. We did the kitchen, okay, right here, cute little home sweet home sign, again it's a little bit bigger. So if you want to use that for um, writing or more of just journaling or a recipe, you might want to mat this on the craft card stocks and then leave it, leave it open at the bottom. I'm just going to put mine down. I think we got everything. I'm just going to double check. We did. Let's just open up to here. And where our 6x6 doesn't have any cut aparts. Well, this, see, we're still going to use this on our cover. So you want to put that aside. You don't want to accidentally use that. But we have our apple pie. And this little circle one I'm going to use, and then we'll we'll be you'll have we'll be cutting some mats. We have some scraps left. Oh wait a minute, I gotta put this on here. I just found it. I just eyeballed it. Let me see, before I lose it again <laughs> on my big apple. Okay, a little circle can go right in there because you definitely can write notes and and things on the back of it there. Nope, on the inside here, we have those little tight spots. So we have these cute little tags. And let's go home. So if you put down a picture, then you can put your tag right on top of that picture. Same with autumn memories. That might be yeah, too deep. So I'll just put them all there. And I would suggest then just with your scraps. Hmm, that's nice and deep. We're going to have to cut some nice and deep ones. And then you've got not a lot of your ephemera left over. If you want to go back and add definitely more, we can add these to our tags. Let me see. What a blustery, beautiful day. So that's a great little tuck spot for those. And after you put down your picture is when I'll go back and I'll put these on. So if I have a picture that didn't quite fill up the spot, a lot of people ask me, well, what do you mean you put it? on after. So say I put my picture there and I don't want to add anything else but it's too bare. Then I've got these in here so the recipient can just grab it and I explain to her just go ahead and add it where you'd like. Um, let's measure and let's just cut a, ta a tag for this one. Okay. 
Wow, come on. Well, I can guarantee you it's going to be at least three and a half inches. There we go. And it's going to be two and three quarters wide is the biggest you can go. So with my scraps, and I've used just about every scrap. So four and a half. A two and three quarters. And that's pretty perfect. You can round corners and then or do decorative ones. And then you'll want to go in and just mat. So I did four and a half by two and three quarters. You could also do a flip over. You could do a couple more. Remember, it's not made to really stuff. Oh, oh that's going that way. And then anywhere else you want to put some little tags. It turned out pretty cute. Let's get out your, in your kit, you have a full size 12 by 12 for our cover. That's because they did not do this in the 6 by 6 paper pad, if you notice. So that was in your kit. And where the big one has pink, this one's going to have the blue on this side because of the fact that, see, and you might want to use just your apple pie or your, this whole thing. So if you want to, then I'll show you how to cut it. So our album is 6 inches, and this is 6 inches. So we're going to cut it 5 and 7 eighths by 5 and 7 eighths. Well, let's do 6 by 5 and 7 eighths. Okay, so I'll cut 6 inches first. No, 5 and 7 eighths first, my length. Making sure I am at the edge. Turn it upside down so today is going to be over there. And we're going to cut that at 6 inches. So we got pretty much all of our wording. Now, that way, too, well, it doesn't really go together because we closed our book. So, I'm going to turn this over. Totally up to you. If you want to continue on, but it looks, it definitely looks kind of cut off, but you've got some of the wording there. It's kind of cute, too. And then I'm putting this on top. So you need to decide what you like. I'm going to go with the green. This is three inches. We already have our length. Make sure we want it's five and seven eighths long, and I'm going to cut three inches. Then we need to cut the back which I'm going to have um, two different. I'm going to go five and seven eighths. And I'm just looking, sorry, I'm just looking over here at how I did the back. So I doubled it. I did a, six and a quarter. Let's see. I'm going to move this to four inches.
I cut mine the wrong direction. This is going to sew into, I did. Oh, I'm lucky to have this one piece. Okay, we ran out of time. <laughs> okay, this is Mine is six and an eighth. I'm going to leave it six and an eighth. And I'm going to cut it by six and a quarter. Basically just cutting this off. Then I'm going to cut four inches at the top. Maybe I like that better. So I'm going to turn it. See where it would cut. I like that. Didn't cut off so many words. And then the bottom, I'm actually going to have a, a sticker sheet go through the back like that. So I'm going to do the back first. Then you're going to have, you do have the one piece left. One's for your uh, cover, but one is going to be for, for our sides. Or if you have anything you like left over from your scraps, you can use those. This one would work pretty good. A little, I'm just going to trim the, the white that was there. And if you're starting to make gifts now for Christmas, I'm telling you, you're going to be so far ahead. <laughs> and here you've got one you could put away for Christmas. this over. Mine overlaps just a hair. And on your sticker sheet, we have the chain of hearts that's going to go over the top. No, it doesn't matter which one. So I'm just going to line my scissors here. Put this one back on the sticker sheet. Take some ink off your fingers and I'll just straighten that up. Hmm. Fortunately, that um, cut it off a little bit. Uh-oh, did I grab the wrong one? Nope, I didn't. I did, but they're apparently, apparently going to work.
And then you, you definitely could use your stamp or happiness is homemade or, or made by right there. And let's put our front piece down. magnets right there. You may have to just work for a few minutes. Again, you can use either side. I know I'm torn. I'm going to go with that. I like it. Well, let's double check. I like that too. I'm going to go with the pink. Now, I'll show you what I'm going to do. So it kind of matches the other one. The big one. Let me say the other one. I'm going to put this down. Basically the same length as our big piece. I'm going to cut a half inch. This will somewhat match the big one because it has the green down the center. We're going to put the lace, flowers in your bow, the only thing that won't be on the front here is our houses. Get our lace out if you have a kit. I didn't cut mine. And see that little bit of green will show through with our lace. And for the lace, I do like to use my score tape. And this one's my three eighths. So I'm going to cut it. Keep it straight. Okay. 
center our lace. I use the edge of my matting and I just run my scissors and if you just set it right there it will cut it nice and straight. Then our second piece I put over on this side. We're going to back this. So that's up to you if you want it on there. Now this lace is a little different. They had run out but it's very similar. This has more space, so you may not like it as well here. If you don't like it as well, that's fine. Um, I, I'm kind of on the fence with it. Then we'll tie a bow for the side. So either way, it's going to be great. One inch by five and seven eighths of an inch, and that's what this leftover pieces for. So we're going to cut two one inch pieces and I'm going to use the blue. And you have plenty of lace, so you can use it anywhere on your book. You can use it on your spines. You can make a nice bow with it if you like. Use it on the inside for your mats and tags. And I always map my albums after because I don't, um, I've made a lot of albums. I don't like to wrap them even in the texture paper. Over time, it does wear out. It's because of the dye. So um, I just think that these are a lot sturdier when you do, not sturdier, but the covers don't wear out. So, it looks like, wow, am I, I am completely out of scraps. I'm going to have to grab this one because I do want to mat this or back it in my craft. I'm not going to ink it. We're going to put that down and just let it dry because I also want to do my butterflies and I used this nice big one Oops. and I do believe we can still yeah we'll still get our nice big one on there. And always use your adhesive because the stickers, whoops, over time are not, well, it's going to stick to my board. <laughs> over time, it's not going to stick. Now, let me show you your, your larger one. So, you could also do the houses still. And I did the same things. These are the house sticker. I backed these. Popped them up on Pop Dots. But we don't have room on our 6x6. Six six. So if you want to use that instead of a butterfly, you certainly can.
remember, if you don't want to leave a little bit of a border because you just didn't go around that turn perfect or you just weren't happy with it, just cut it right to the edge. Just go slow. And basically turn your paper and your scissors should just follow. But a really good pair of fussy cutting scissors is the secret. I could never do it with my Tim Holtz. Well, they leave a ridge. They're great for other things, but not fussy cutting for me. And when I got these, it was like night and day. So you can pick these up in your craft stores. We will be selling them very soon at Country Craft Creations, the EK Success, because they're fabulous. You'll love them. Now our butterfly. Okay. Now I come back and do those little intricate areas. Okay, then I just put him on my board, fold up one side, fold up the other side, kind of make it square. Make him a little bit 3D there. Push his wings out. And I did use foam dots. Um, I'm going to match these tips here on the edge of my paper. And so we only need to put our foam dots on this side. Need more. has been in my tools again. Oh my gosh. My crooked ones are gone. It's like taking my sewing scissors. Somebody's in trouble. My husband goes to Harbor Freight all the time. And he loves these, but he'd rather use mine. Whoops. Now, adhesive. Again, these aren't made, I mean, they're not going to be permanent. So we only want half. And I think... 
for us to have the big butterfly, he's just going to have to be part of our our cover here. The other one I was able to put up at the top, but this one we're not. Okay, I'll be right back and we'll have our flowers and we'll put our bow down. Okay, in the kit you were given, you've got your flowers and then even though it was a small one, you were given two bows. So we're going to put them both together so I can show you. You may decide this is too big with the butterfly and I admit I should have waited and seen before we put the butterfly down. There it is. Your bone folder, you're just going to take these two, add your adhesive to the end, just on that edge. Now to make it smaller too, you can leave off the tail part because the tail does make it quite a, a bit larger. Then the center just wraps and wraps. And then you'll see it won't go anymore, and that's where you add your adhesive and onto the back. Then just kind of fluff it out. Now you can either glue it onto your tail, which makes it that much bigger, but for the small album, it is kind of big. You may only want to use the bow part. And on the big album, we put it here at the bottom, but it's more centered. Let me show you. We center because we've got more space here to work with. Now, you know, I, I'm thinking somewhere up there will be really cute with the flowers. Now, here's how we put together our small one. You have these pieces here. Oh, and the bows, um, they're going to be, they might be different colors. You might have either the pink or the blue in your kit. And so we put adhesive here. Close pins will work really well holding that down for you. Time to clean that tip again. We're going to just hold that for a minute. Then we'll put these two little guys together. And again, you can use these bows anywhere you like. Even this little tiny center piece, yeah, just kind of go like that. Wrap your center. It is little. So if you're like me with these big old fingers, adhesive on the end. right down on the center of the tail. That is more appropriate size, but we want I want you to have them both. So you have both bows if you decide you want or you can use it on a different project. And before I put that down, so you even with the small one we gave you I gave you the big flowers. And so we used more of the bigger ones on the bigger one, of course, but I'm going to use the small ones here. What I did is I took three of them, two white and a tan, and I just did some twisting. Now, if you've got wire cutters, uh, button cutters, button shank cutters, or you have the Tim Holtz scissors, I need to look there. You're going to just cut those wires off just need a tiny little bit and this is where you you will want your hot glue gun and it's going to sit preferably kind of on the center or on this album I think we're going to bring them over here to the side because on our big album we put them at the top there was more room and I think I do like them down here with 
Mr. Butterfly. Oh, yeah, with the butterfly. I do. And then you have some greenery you can play with. And I just break that right off. And I'll hot glue that down. Right there with our butterfly. And you have that lace. So if you want to add some lace back behind there. You would just put, just kind of a piece that's folded in half. Actually, you would you want to hot glue and tuck that down first. You've got room in between those um, foam tabs, and your little bit of hot glue. Don't burn yourself. Your lace, <clears throat> excuse me, lace sticking out there. Let me just hot glue that down. And my hot glue gun is heating up, so. And then again, if you want to do a bow, a lot of different ways to do them. If you like to tie them, then you can just attach it to the side. I tend to leave the sides plain because of the folding, but you do have all these lovely flowers. Like I said, even with the smaller album, we wanted, we, you know, just included them because they are very pretty with this cover. You can even stick some down here at the bottom. that away. And hot glue that all down. And there's our cute little album. I hope you guys are enjoying making this. I think it's a lot of fun. Quick. It really is quick. Especially when you do it after one or two times. Quick and fun and a great little gift, especially for a housewarming gift. And be sure to join us on Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations on Facebook and share with us your finished creation. And I'll see you if you're going to follow me in the large album tutorial. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.